This is Wave, a wearable Bluetooth metering that lets you control sounds and effects with the movement of your hands. Wave was developed by Icelandic manufacturer Genki Instruments, who successfully crowdfunded it on Indiegogo around three years ago. They've reached out to me a couple of months ago and asked me if they should send me a Wave ring controller so I can review it here on my channel. And I agreed under the condition that I can take my time because I actually wanted to use it for a couple of months before talking about it, which I did. You might have seen it pop up on my channel or social media accounts here and there before. My first impression was rather underwhelmed. I thought Wave might be yet another novelty controller, more of a gimmick than something with actual use for daily music production. But I have to say, after using it for a while, I discovered it's deeper than I thought, and there's more to it than I initially expected. Let's explore. Wave is a little ring made of black plastic. It has three rubber coated buttons, a little LCD display and a micro USB charging port. Wave comes with two adjustable Velcro straps to attach it to your finger and a little soft box to store it or transport it. The ring contains sensors that transmit the position and movement of your hand and transmits that data to your computer via Bluetooth. In order to use it to control your plugins, you will need the free companion software it comes with, SoftWave. SoftWave receives the data from Wave and forwards it to your DAW or plugins, and you also need it to take care of all the settings and adjustments. Wave lets you control sounds or effects with six different movements or gestures. Tilt, pan, roll, tap, vibrato, and click. Tilt lets me control a parameter by tilting my hand or finger. In SoftWave, I can adjust the movement range with these two white indicators. At the maximum setting, I have to tilt my hand 180 degrees to travel from the lowest to the highest possible value. I can decrease this range by moving the lower pointer closer to the middle. So now I only have to lower my hand to a horizontal position to get to the lowest value. With some trial and error, I can set a movement range that lets me comfortably play chords and control the filter cutoff at the same time. Another way to use Wave is to play pads, keys or whatever with one hand and use Wave to control parameters with the other, which is what I prefer. This allows me to choose a wider movement range for more precise control and also it looks a bit more dramatic, which may be desirable in a live performance. A very short movement range lets me create dynamic rhythmic patterns. The other two main gestures, pan and roll, work in a similar fashion as tilt, but use other axes of movement. Pan lets me control sounds by panning my hand from side to side. Depending on the rage, this movement feels a bit unnatural and uncomfortable for me, so I'd rather move my whole arm than just my hand. Roll on the other side feels more like a natural movement. Here you can control sound by rolling your hand.
With these three main gestures, you can now control three parameters with one hand at the same time. There are three additional gestures. Tap sends out a trigger impulse whenever you tap something. This can be a tabletop, your lap, or any other relatively hard surface. Whenever the ring sensors an impact, it sends out a trigger signal, which is great to play percussion or drums. When I set the sensitivity to the lowest possible value in Softwave, I have to tap the table really hard to even get a sound. At higher settings, it gets sensitive enough to play fast figures like hi-hat patterns. And at maximum sensitivity, you can trigger a sound simply by shaking your finger, and you don't even have to bother hitting a table anymore. A side note, tap only sets out a trigger signal and no velocity value. Of all the gestures, tap is probably the one where latency is most critical. I couldn't notice any lag or latency, and I did not experience any jitter or dropouts during my tests. Gesture number five is vibrato, which senses sideways movements. So if you wiggle your hands while playing, you can control the vibrato of your sound. Of course, you can also assign it to any other parameter. I found this particular gesture not so useful for me, but I guess people that play keys can make good use of this. It does work with pads, so this gesture might add something for finger drummers as well. And finally, the last gesture is click, which is not really a gesture, but still pretty useful. The three buttons can be programmed to trigger custom commands, so in a live performance you could use them to switch through presets or change scenes. Once you've connected Wave to Softwave, you can either load up a preset or create a new one where you adjust the different movement ranges and sensitivities to your needs. Wave appears as a MIDI input in your DAW, so you can now use the built-in MIDI learn function to assign it to any parameter. Softwave can also host VST plugins on itself, so you can use it in standalone mode without a DAW. It runs on both Mac and Windows, and it requires a computer with Bluetooth LE, which most modern machines provide. Alternatively, it can wirelessly connect to Eurorack with Genki's Wavefront module or directly to hardware with VidiMaster by CME. Softwave is free with Wave and it's essential. You'll have to use it to connect Wave to your DAW and plugins and to tweak the settings. But it's pretty straightforward and I had no issues with stability or performance on my MacBook Pro. One thing that I noticed is that it's practically impossible to perform one isolated gesture without affecting the others a little bit at the same time. There will always be a little crosstalk. For example, if I'm tilting, I will likely be panning a bit too. The reason is that I'm not a robot. I can simply not move my hands with the same accuracy that the ring uses to censor my movements. So unless you're a surgeon, you will not be able to control a sound as surgically as with a traditional rotary knob or something. But in exchange for a little less predictability and precision, you gain a whole lot of expressivity. And depending on your use case, that trade-off can be well worth it. Wave is meant to go on your index finger, so the display faces you and you can navigate the buttons with your thumb. And this works on both the left and the right hand. Technically, you can wear it on any of your fingers or thumbs, but it would make it harder to read the display. And depending on the size of your hands, the bulgy part could get in the way. With Wave attached to my index finger, I was able to use pads, keys, sliders, knobs, my mouse, a touchpad, a keyboard, without any restrictions. By the way, you will typically use one Wave ring at a time. 
perhaps two, one on each index finger, but certainly not one on each of your fingers. Not only would that be very pricey, but you would have to control more than 60 parameters using 10 of your fingers at once, which for most scenarios and most people would likely not make much sense. To clear up another misconception, WAVE is not an MPE controller. You can control multiple parameters of an instrument or effect at once, but everything you do will always affect all notes you're playing equally. This also means that WAVE will work with every software and hardware that is able to receive MIDI CC data. It does not have to be MPE ready. The ring is very lightweight and it didn't restrict me while playing at all. And actually it's so light that after a while I forget I'm even wearing it. The build quality feels fine. I assume it would survive slipping off your finger and flying across the room or something, but I would probably avoid stepping on it because it is pretty lightweight. So now that you know what Wave does and how it works, uh, let's talk a little bit about how it was like to use it. When I first tried it, I was quite surprised how sensitively it registers every little movement of my hand. And it took me a while to get used to this different approach to controlling sound. Once I understood the gestures, tweaked the movement ranges and sensitivities and practiced a bit, I was able to intuitively and pretty precisely shape sounds with Wave and my hands. Although it's very different from the usual approach of controlling sound with knobs and faders and such things, it felt really natural to me. And I even got into a flow state sometimes where I would feel one with the music and forget everything around me. As Wave doesn't give me much visual feedback and the sense of a scale of reference, it forces me to work with my ears instead of my eyes, which can really help me focus on the sound. A possible downside of Wave is that it does take some effort and time to set it up. You have to launch it, connect it, assign it to controls and adjust movement ranges and sensitivities. You can cut down on the setup time a bit by saving custom presets in both SoftWave and your DAW, but at the end of the day, using Wave will always be a bit more of a hassle than just grabbing that generic MIDI controller that sits on the desk right in front of you anyway. But for performing and experimental artists, the effort to set it up is probably negligible and by far outweighed by the excellent portability and expressivity. And although it will not replace my standard MIDI controllers, I still think it's a great addition, which can help me get out of the box once in a while. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and see you in the next video.